This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this chapter, we're going to look at tax adjusted trade losses for individuals. Now, a loss can appear at any point um, in your calculations. So, so far, we've looked at uh, firstly, we would adjust profits. Second, we would do capital allowances. So a loss could be in all sorts of places. So here, you might actually start off, instead of starting with net profit, you might actually start with a loss. If that's the case, then you put the loss at the top of the computation and deal with the addbacks and the uh, deductions exactly the same as you would do if you were dealing with a profit. Now it might be that you start with a net profit, but by the time you've done all the adjustments, you have a loss. If that was the case, then the capital allowances would increase that loss. So that's the second situation where you could find it. Um, the third situation is where you have a net profit, you've made the adjustments and you still have a profit, but by the time you take off your capital allowances, you end up with a loss. So don't be phased by losses. They can turn up in all sorts of different places, but if you follow the pro formas exactly the same as you would for a profit when you're adjusting, you deduct the capital allowances in the way you would normally do with the brackets. Then at the end of the day, you've now got a loss. Then this chapter will explain what we do with that, how you adjust for it, how you get a relief for it, and what methods you get of relieving that loss and there are several and again there are rules which you need to learn so if in the basis period for the tax year you do have a loss then in the income tax computation you put zero nil okay so you could have employment with whatever that is from the salary uh, you could have bank interest and then where if you've got a trade then you would write nil or zero one or the other it's never a negative never a negative what you have to do is you have to put the nil in there and then give relief for the loss afterwards okay and these are the rules and it can sometimes result in a repayment of tax these are the main reliefs that you can have for a trading loss. One, you can carry it forward against future trading profits from the same trade. So that's one, carry it forward. Two, relieve against total income in the current and or preceding tax year. So that's carry forward current year previous year or you can then extend it into gains very special rules there because you're crossing over between income tax and capital gains there so um, it's an unusual one you it, it doesn't come up as often as um, um, it doesn't come up often okay uh, then we have opening years rules so, you know, we did basis periods. There are some special rules regarding that when we have a loss in that first set of accounts. And it's against total income. And then there's what's known as terminal loss relief when you cease to trade. So those are the, the two main ones. Carry forward, current year, previous year. Carry forward, current year, previous year or whichever way you're looking at me. Okay, carry forward, 
current year, previous year. And then we've got three special ones. These are the normal ones and three special ones. An extension into gains, opening years and um, terminal loss relief. So let's look at them one at a time. We're just going to look at them one at a time and go deal with each one. Now, this is what's known as the default position. If you do nothing and don't make a claim, then this will happen. So a trading loss, maybe you may decide you want to anyway, but it's called the default position because <clears throat> if you do nothing, this will happen. Um, a trading loss may be carried forward and get against the first trade profits. Same trade. Must be the same trade. Trading loss must be set off in full against the next available profits. Any loss is then carried forward until future profits arise and it can be carried forward um, indefinitely. So we have a little example here. I'm going to show you this little example. Albert has the following trading results. So in the year, so he's obviously been going for some time. Uh, year to the 31st of December 2020 had a loss of £5,000. And then the following two years, he made a profit of three and a profit of ten. We are to assume that he's chosen to carry the loss forward. And you are to calculate his assessable amounts for all the relevant tax years. OK, so let's have a look at this. Now, as with all of these, um, there is a, um, a procedure, a pro forma, um, something that the examiner will have when they're marking your paper. They will have a model answer and I'm going to set it out as I would expect you to present it in your exam so that it looks like the model answer. And again, we always head. OK, and we have the years across the top. So we're looking at 20, 20, 21, 21, 22, and 20, 22, 23. So they're across the top. So his trading income. Always set your pro forma out first. Less loss carried forward. Revised trade income. So I've set it out. I'm also going to set up what's known as a loss memorandum or a loss memo. There's marks for this, so make sure you always include it as part of the workings. So having set this up, what we're going to do is we are going to then copy parts of the question into the answer. So we know that in the year to 31st of December 2020, he made a loss of 5,000. OK, so in there, the answer is nil. Then he made a profit of three and a profit of ten. So we've copied the question into the answer, set up our little loss memorandum. OK. It's at this point, if the question doesn't, um, if you're not sure about it, go back to the question. You need to stop, breathe, go back to the question. You've copied all the relevant information. Now what you need to do is to make sure that you follow the instructions from the question. So this question clearly says he wants to carry it forward. All right, so we're going to carry it forward. OK, so we're going to carry the loss carried forward. And we're going to use some of it in 21-22, just a pull on there, which leaves us with a balance of that. So 
That is the first available profit from the same trade. And the first available profit we relieve in full and therefore there is no um, trade income that needs to go into the computation from there. Okay, so we still have 2,000 that we can carry forward. So loss carried forward because it says we can carry it forward indefinitely. And we're going to use that in full. Here means that 8,000 is the figure that needs to go into the computation. So you can see how that works. Works nice and easy. Just carry it forward. Make sure that you show all your workings. Now, loss relief against total income. A trading loss may be relieved against total income after any qualifying loan interest payments of the in the year of loss, which is the current year, and or the preceding tax year, the previous year. So the loss is calculated on an accounting basis, a uh, period basis, and then assessed using the normal basis of assessment. And a, so a loss for the year 30th of June 22, which would be assessable in 22-23 on a current year basis, may be relieved against income in that year, if you've got other income in that year, you can relieve it in that year or the year before. Now that should say 21-22. That's an error. Will you please amend your books accordingly? Seems that the prompt has prompted all the dates to be changed. Okay, preceding year 21-22. If relief after taking total income is taken, the loss may be set off to the maximum possible extent subject to a cap. Now there is a cap because what has what could possibly take place is you could make a very large loss um, in a year um, and then take it back to the preceding year and get a refund of all the tax you paid there. So while the revenue are fairly flexible and fairly um, lenient with loss relief that's available, there are certain restrictions, and this is one of them. There's a cap on the income tax relief, and we're going to have a look at that later. Now, the problem with when you are dealing with losses is the potential to lose your personal allowance. The word we're going to include in the computation is wasted. You may well lose or waste uh, because partial claims are not allowed. It's all or nothing. You either claim it in full or you don't. You can't sort of say, well, I need this amount in order to be able to preserve my personal allowance. You can't. You either put it in and lose the personal allowance or you don't put it in. So there's a lot of um, decision making around the utilisation of losses. Um, thankfully, in the TX exam, normally the question will tell you very specifically, we want you to do this or this is available or it will be very obvious from the question that they've given to you what it is they want you to do. You will never have to do a full question for TX. Well, if we do this, we'll make that saving. If we do that, we'll make this saving. But if we do this, we'll make that saving because that's more of an advanced tax level. So it should be obvious in the question or you're given specific instructions and you they want to test this one or that one, but probably never both. OK, you need to make a claim if you are claiming uh, loss relief and it's normally done on your tax return and it tells you there um, where you need um, to do it. 
So let's look at example uh, number two.